video, you're going to learn the difference between been and being. This is a must know topic for you to sound fluent in English. This is a question that a student requested and I'm very happy that they did. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about the difference between been and being. Both of these are simply different forms of the verb to be. So been is the past participle and being is the present participle. Now, when you use one or the other simply depends on the verb tense that the sentence requires. And how do you know which verb tense the sentence requires? Well, you need to look at your time reference and understand where you are on a timeline and if you're talking about the past, the present, or the future, and how those actions interact with one another, okay? So we use been in the present perfect verb tense. For example, how have you been? The question, how have you been? This is in the present perfect. And then your answer could also be in the present perfect. I've been busy. I have, as a contraction, I've, I've been busy. So your key here to know when to use been or being is that been is used with the auxiliary verb have. But remember that have can be conjugated as has with he or she. So it would be she has been busy, I have been busy. So when you see the verb have or has, you know your sentence needs been, and that's the present perfect verb tense. Now, another time we use been is in the past perfect. So for example, I had been there, I had been there. Here, your key is that been is used with had. So had is just the past form of the verb have. So again, you can just memorize when you see have, even if it's in a different conjugation or in the past, you need been. Being, on the other hand, is used with completely different verb tenses. Being is a present participle, so it's used in the continuous form. It's the verb in ing. In that sense, it's used in the present continuous. I could say, she's being difficult. She is, she's being difficult. So here, your key is that being is used with the auxiliary verb to be. She is, is, is a form of the verb to be. It would be you are being difficult. Are is an auxiliary of the verb to be. So when you have the verb to be, you know you need being. We also use being in the past continuous. I could say she was being difficult or they were being difficult. So again, we're using the auxiliary verb to be, but it's just conjugated in the past as was or were. So your clue for being is when it's used with the verb to be in a present form conjugated with the subject or in the past form, which is either was or were. Now, being can also be used as a gerund verb. So that's the verb in ing, but it's actually being used as the subject of a sentence. So simply put, I can start my sentence with a gerund verb. And this is to make a general statement that applies to a general situation. So I could say being difficult is not a good personality trait, okay? It's just a general statement that applies most of the time. Being difficult is not a good personality trait. 
So notice my sentence starts with the verb being because that's the gerund verb. So that's a more advanced way to use the verb being. So that's to summarize when you're going to use been or being, remember that they're just different forms of the verb to be and when you use them depends on the verb tense that the sentence requires and the sentence requires a specific verb tense depending on the time reference and if you're in the past, present or future. So now this is a lot of information. The best way to truly understand this information is to practice it. So you have a lot of work to do. I want you to leave five sentences in the comments. One with the present perfect, past perfect, present continuous, past continuous, and bonus points if you can get a gerund statement. Remember, all of these are using been or being. So get to work. You're going to have to review this lesson again because there's a lot of information in here. So just take it slow. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4isenglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. Awesome job, we're covering some very advanced grammar topics here. Take it slow, do the practice, review this video a few more times, and don't worry, you got this. I'll see you in my next video, bye.